now if my channel was monetized it wouldn't be monetized after this video hi everyone welcome to my channel where we talk about hungarian true crime cases mysteries and conspiracies so if you like this kind of content don't forget to subscribe hit the notification bell don't forget to give me a like and a comment and let's get started trigger warning this case is extremely graphic so if you are sensitive to child abuse, child murder, sexual abuse, necrophilia, then I suggest you skip this video. Or if that's what you like more, I'm going to put some timestamps in the video so you can skip over the graphic parts. So today's video is going to be about a girl called Jancsola Dani Piroska. Therefore, she had two surnames and one given name, and I'm going to refer to her by her given name. Piroska, which by the way means red hoodie in Hungarian. I'm also going to write the names in my videos from now on on the screen so you are able to follow the story much better and maybe even learn a few things in Hungarian. I realized that listening to foreign names without even seeing them written down may be hard for other people to follow the story. So that's what we're going to do from now on. So this girl, Piroska, was a child murderer. She was very young herself. At the time of her murder, she was 19 or 20 years old. And she murdered five young girls under the age of 17 in order to satisfy her sexual desires. You are going to see it's going to be very graphic. But before we can talk about her, we have to talk about her mother. So in order for us to understand the story of Piroska, we have to start with her mother, Borbala. So Jancsa Borbala was born in 1909 into an extremely poor family. And they were 16 siblings altogether. Now, only three of them survived infancy. And her remaining two sisters also committed suicide when they were in their adult years. Borbala also lost her father when she was only eight, so therefore she was only left with her mother. And because they were incredibly poor, she had to start working. By the time she was 16, she was a full-time sex worker. She didn't really have any other choice, unfortunately. Now, because of her career choice, her mother and her extended family disowned her. She had two children from two different men as a result of her work and both men denied fatherhood. They wanted nothing to do with their children, so Borbala became a single mother. So she had these two children. Piroska, our main character for today, was born in 1934 on, on January 15, and her little brother was born in 1943, August 5. Luckily, they were able to inherit a little cottage in a village called Turk Saint Miklos from the father of Lipot, her brother. And this is where they lived. According to the villagers, this cottage was more like a brothel than a family home. And they described it as it had yellow walls from the outside. They used up the fence for firewood from the three rooms in this tiny cottage. They only lived in one and used the other two for storage. And it was extremely dirty and neglected. In the garden, the grass was a meter tall. And it was just not ideal for two small children to live in. The windows didn't even have glass. They were covered with tar paper. And they didn't have any kind of storage for their clothes, so they just put their clothes on nails in the walls and they didn't have any kind of bathing facility so they just sometimes every few weeks put some water in this deep dish baking trays and that's how they bathed. So remember when I told you that Borbala, the mother, was a sex worker since she was a child? When Piroska, our main character for today, was 10 or 12, her mother already put her up for sex work. Sources say that they work together, mother and daughter, in their family home, and they actually really did run a brothel kind of thing. Their wages were extremely low, and most men just paid 
with food like bread. Both of them contracted STDs several times. There is records of Piroshka being treated by doctors on at least three occasions for STDs. You probably don't know, but Hungary by this time was under Soviet oppression for many years. And there was a telephone station from the Russian military nearby this village. So by the time Piroshka was only 14, she was the resident sex worker at this telephone station for these grown men, these grown soldiers. Sources say that when she was not working there as a sex worker, she was roaming the village, stealing, committing petty crimes. She had several run-ins with the police as a child. This is all we know about her upbringing and childhood and she started committing crimes, murders, when she was only 18. In the summer of 1953, Piroshka was just grazing this meadow instead of doing anything else, she was just walking on the meadow and came by this little girl who was 11-year-old Marika, Komarami Marika, her full name, who was a cowgirl. When they met up a few months later in the city, waiting in line in the grocery store, she said hi to her. She decided to lure this little girl, Marika, into her house with the pretense that they were going to go there and play or do something together and come back to the shop when the line was smaller. Keep in mind that in communist Hungary, the lines in the shops were extremely long. You could not just buy whatever you wanted whenever you wanted. They go over to Piroshka's house and Piroshka gives Marika this comic book to read. And when Marika is not paying attention, she is looking at the book, Piroshka comes and starts strangling her from the back with a piece of cord. I have been debating whether or not I should discuss the actual details that she did to her dead body because it's very disrespectful, in my opinion, to this poor little girl's memory. But let's just say that she had oral sex, received and gave oral sex to the girl's dead body. And when she finished, she put a blanket on the body, secured it with a cord around the neck, dragged it out of the house and tossed it inside the well, upside down. Now this well was not the kind of well that you see in movies. It was more like a hole in the ground that was covered with this heavy metal lid. So you could open and close the, the well. I'm, I will try to show a picture if I can. Many people actually witnessed Marika going in the direction of the aforementioned Soviet military telephone station. But the police did not even look at this, like they did not even question the soldiers. And there are two reasons to this, two possibilities, and I think the actual reason is the combination of these two. So the police, first of all, did not have the right to investigate the Soviet military. The Soviet military is here, Hungarian police is here. They were not allowed to do any kind of investigation. And even if they could, the police was actually afraid. You remember that Hungary was under this oppression. Russians were extremely threatening here. And if the police did anything, they themselves could have ended up dead. By the way, the socialist propaganda was claiming that socialism has cured all crimes. So they just tried to push this agenda that nothing bad could have happened to Marika because crime doesn't exist in communism. In 1954, Piroshka went to the market and made friends with this vendor girl who was selling chickens. And Coincidentally, this girl's name was also Piroshka. That was a very popular name at the time. So I'm going to differentiate between them as the murderer Piroshka and the victim Piroshka. The way that she invited the victim Piroshka into her house was that she said she was going to buy the leftover chickens that she could not sell at the market. She lured her in, she gave her the comic book again, and when the victim, Piroshka, wasn't paying attention, she strangled her from the back with a piece of cord. And she did the same 
things with the body as with the previous victim. So you know that the sources are extremely graphic and detailed in Hungarian and since these sources are not available anywhere else, I am your primary source. I'm the one who translated this to English. I have the responsibility to tell you the details. On the other hand, I still find it very disrespectful to this poor girl's memory, what happened to her. So I am not going to go into that much detail because it's just insane. So long story short, she performed Cunnilingus on the corpse and she also received Cunnilingus by taking out the tongue of the victim. She inserted carrots and broomsticks into her own and into the victim's genitals and this is how this girl lost her virginity post-mortem. Then she tossed the body into the well, just like the last time. She hid the clothes and she took the money that was on the girl. In 1954, just a few weeks later, she met this girl called Shimon Irin, who was then 17 year old, and they were actually dating. They were seeing each other and Irene had sex with her, though she did not reciprocate it. And when Piroshka realized that Irene had the power to expose her sexuality, that she was actually a lesbian, Piroshka became very anxious that what might the village say if they figured that she was a lesbian, an abnormal person. So Piroshka decided to kill her own girlfriend, Irene. And she lured her into her house, strangled her from the back with a piece of cord, though she did not have sex with um, Irene's corpse because she saw then that Irene had an STD. So she just tossed the body into the well and took her money, took her belongings. So in 1954, again, just a couple of days or probably a few weeks later, she saw a little girl in the bus stop. This was 12-year-old Marika. And as you can see, Marika and Piroshka were both extremely popular names at the time. So this girl, Marika, came to Turek Sent Mihai to send her holidays with her aunt. And she was at the bus stop. She had just arrived and Piroshka went to her, offered her help to carry her luggage to her aunt's house because she just happened to live on the same street. So it was not a detour for her. And on the way there, she managed to lure this little girl, Marika, into her home. And she gave her a book while she was waiting. She strangled her and she did animalistic things to her body as well. Now, I don't have more details. Thank God. We don't need to know everything. And she tossed her body into the well, just like the other three times. So in 1954, just a couple of days after this, she met her fifth and final murder victim. This was a girl called Katoka, who she met on the train station. Now, I don't have much details about this victim's life, who she was, how she ended up there. But the point is, she managed to lure her as well into her house. You can guess what happened next. She gave her book. While she was not listening, she strangled her from the back, this time with a belt, and she corrupted her body as well. Then she tossed the body into the well, just like the last times, and took all her belongings and valuables. You might be asking what she did with the belongings of these girls. She didn't keep them, she sold them at the flea market and that was her main income alongside sex work. You can really imagine that the villagers, the local people, were started panicking. All of these little girls were going missing, nobody had any idea where they could have gone. So parents started fearing letting their children go outside alone People were pressuring the police to finally do something about it, but the police, of course, didn't do anything about it for the aforementioned reasons. They were afraid of the Russian military. They didn't want to look bad 
that Hungary had crime. So they just didn't do anything. So eventually people came up with the craziest, stupidest theories on what happened to the girls. People first started accusing the Romani people in the village of the kidnappings. Then they also said that it must have been the Jews collecting the innocent blood of these victims to build their new synagogue nearby. And even the local mortician was at point suspected of the crimes or the disappearances. But soon Piroshka had her downfall. So now let's get on to how she got caught. A then 21 year old sex worker moved to town to start a new clientele or to look for more work. Very, very soon after moving there, like probably hours later, she met Piroshka and they made friends because they were in the same business. So Piroshka offered to help her carry her luggage to this woman's accommodation. However, what she actually wanted to do was steal her luggage full of clothes and resell them. So Piroshka actually did manage to steal the luggage. However, this woman threatened her that she was going to go to the police if she doesn't give the luggage back. So Piroshka invites her to her home to talk it out, to discuss it and make peace. And she gave her a shot of palinka, which is a very strong spirit in Hungary. And sometimes if you drink one, you get sleepy or dizzy because it's that strong. So this woman had this shot of palinka and became very tired and she fell asleep on Piroshka's garden in a, on a blanket. So she wakes up to Piroska trying to strangle her with a cord. However, this woman put up a very good fight and she managed to escape Piroska. Of course, she ran straight to the police where she told them what Piroska just tried to, did, tried to do to her. The police brought Piroska to the police station where she admitted to this crime of stealing the luggage and trying to uh, hurt or kill this woman. The police decides to search her house to find the stolen luggage. The police did not find the luggage, however, they found the clothes that the missing girls were reported wearing at the time of their disappearances. One of the policemen found this pit, this well in the ground and opened the heavy lid and looked inside with a torch. And that's when he saw the decomposing bodies floating in the water. Of course, somebody had to go down and physically retrieve the bodies. So they go down and they found these bodies with the cords and the belts around their necks, their bodies decomposing, their faces beaten up. It took several hours to retrieve the bodies. Eventually, the fire brigade had to help them and later several high-ranking military officials and policemen showed up, as well as people from the ministry. The police guessed, or at least assumed, that Piroshka could not have worked alone and she must have had an accomplice. So they arrested her mother as well, Borbala. Since she was the owner of the house, she must have known what was going on or even helped at the same time. So the police described the house when they entered as the filthiest thing that they had ever seen. The walls were covered in so much dust that you would have not been able to tell what color the paint was. And the whole house was infested with mice, rats and insects. They they even found human feces in cooking pots. However, the police yet again did not do a very good job with the crime scene. They did not even collect the murder weapons, the cord and the belt. They, they didn't do a very good job with the bodies. So they ordered five wooden chests and put the bodies in those. And you can only imagine that the whole village must have smelled like decomposition and death. The parents and the families of the victims were in such shock what happened to their girls. Many of them did not even want to identify or could not identify the bodies and therefore they did not bring them home to bury them. 
so the government ended up paying for all of the girls uh, burials. All five victims were put to rest in 1954, September 7th. Remember that Borbala had another child, Piroshka's little brother, who was still underage at the time of the murders. And Piroshka herself also had two very young children from two different Soviet soldiers. So these three kids, her brother and her own children, were taken by Child Protective Services and were given up for adoption later on. And you might wonder what happened to the house where all of these horrible crimes happened. It was standing just neglected, empty, until somebody eventually bought it and bulldozed it down and built a new house on it. The trial started in 1954, September 29, which was just a few weeks, very, very soon after the last murder, which was in August so probably a month later. She was charged with the following crimes. Five counts of first-degree murder, one attempted murder, altogether six counts of cheating, though I'm not sure if that's the correct term in English, so correct me if you know better. Hazardous work avoidance, which was a thing in communism. If you were unemployed, you were considered a public hazard and you would be put to jail and then to work camps as well as stealing and sex work, because sex work was illegal at the time. And I think it still is. Her mother was charged with complicity in the crimes. So at first Piroshka actually completely denied having anything to do with the murders. She made up of all kinds of s lies that didn't make any sense of how she was not in on this. And then as the days passed, she just made up different kinds of stories of how she actually was a little bit involved and then she was forced to be involved. It's redundant for me to tell you all of them, it's not important. However, her mother said on her trial that Piroshka had always been a very problematic and misbehaved child. She was always a bully and whenever she would just walk on the street, she would just randomly hit and punch other children in the face and in the back and she was visibly happy and content with her whenever she did that. She often ran away from home, she robbed people, she stole from people, she cheated on several occasions. Her mother even said that whenever they had a pet cat or a pet dog, they would not stay very long in the house. Somehow they would just mysteriously disappear. So the theories are that Piroshka either killed them because she was this fucking psychopath or she even ate them, ate their bodies raw. Piroshka was supposed to like to eat raw meat. At one time, the mother Borbala caught Piroshka having oral sex with her own stepbrother who was only seven years old at the time. After this occurrence that she was caught having sex with her stepbrother, she tried to commit suicide by overdosing on medication. Remember those Russian soldiers that worked at the telephone station? They were some crazy motherfuckers. They were pedophiles, they were child abusers, they were rapists. They kept the whole village in fear because they could of their ranks. And Piroshka played on this. She wanted to blame those men for the murders. And I mean, I don't think that those men were innocent. They did a lot of crazy, terrible things. But there is absolutely no evidence that they were in on these specific murders and kidnappings. So on the last day of the trial, Piroshka was finally able to admit to her crimes. And that was when she said that she realized that she was a lesbian when she was 15. When she was in the market one day, she found these books, these pornographic books that had images of women having sex and of bestiality, and that's when she took interest in this. The last thing that she said to the judge before being sentenced was that she wished to raise her son and that she promised she wouldn't do such a bad thing again. Like, source? Trust me, bro. I just promise. I promise I'm not gonna kill anyone again, okay? 
And there was this finger pointing between the mother, Borbala, and Piroshka. They both kept blaming each other. The mother kept saying how fucked up and psychopathic Piroshka had been her whole life. And then Piroshka kept pointing at everybody, including her mom, how she was in on it, how she knew what she was doing and that she encouraged her to try to kidnap and kill girls that had nicer clothes so they would be able to steal more from them. Piroshka also said that her mother took all of the money that she ever made either from prostitution or from the reselling of the victim's possessions. So the mother was essentially her pimp, which I believe, I think they were both in on these crimes. Doesn't matter how much they tried to finger point at the other, I think they were very much in this together. On December 12th in 1954, the trial finally ended. Piroshka was sentenced to death by hanging and her mother was sentenced to life in prison for complicity. However, their mother fa died at the end of the 1960s in a high security mental hospital because she went crazy. Her execution took place on the courtyard of the prison, which was a tourist attraction. People went there in buses by the dozens. There were rows of seats and the families of the victims got to sit in the first row. There were journalists, photographers. This was just sensationalized. Her final wish was to see her son one last time, but the court did not grant her wish. So she was hanged that day. Her body was buried in a ditch in the cemetery, and this ditch was reserved for people that lived non-Catholic deaths, that were murderers, rapists, either committed suicide or were unknown people. So that's the end of this video. What do you think? Was it too graphic? Should have I put more details into what happened to the bodies or should have I put fewer details? Do you think that her crimes were sort of justifiable? Do you understand where she was coming from? That she was abused, impoverished, that she was forced into sex work since she was 10 years old, that she was always raped by Russian soldiers, and that she was a closeted lesbian and she was afraid of the consequences of being outed? Or do you see it as a crazy psychopath who willingly put herself up to sex work and committed these crimes out of her craziness? What do you think? Let me know. My idea is that yes, her upbringing was not ideal, all the way from her mother, like her mother's childhood was already terrible enough. And I see how murderers or criminals are somehow the victims of their circumstances. However, she had f five chances to stop doing what she did. She could have stopped after the first murder. She didn't have to go on and commit four more murders and attempt another one. She did not have to lie, she could have admitted it from the get-go. She just continuously made the wrong choice and she didn't even really try to, to get out of this lifestyle. So let me know what you think. Let me know what you thought of the video production. Do you have any suggestions on what I could improve? If you like this video or you are interested in similar content, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and hit the notification bell. It really helps me out with the algorithm if you engage under my video. So please do that and thank you so much for watching. Bye!